the torch torchetti this is what you idiots missed title pending well it's officially october the month of halloween why do we say that because everyone reminds us it's now the month of halloween but this isn't necessarily a bad thing in fact it could be a very 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 good thing if you're into MMOs, because all that spookiness and wonderful sales are going on of costumes and skins, including an APB Reloaded. Yeah, no, that that's still a thing. Like, they've really been keeping up. They're hanging in there. And the people of San Pedro, the criminals and enforcers, because we're, we're going to be bordering on that kind of world of a certain individual does get the name president attached to them. I can just see it now. But there's a Joker sale going on for things inspired by a certain movie starring Will Smith and Margot Robbie that came out in the summer that's still going on. Think about that for a moment. They're also supplying up to 50% off of items and premium subscription for 30 days. And that's actual 30 days, not 30 logins. So yeah, microtransactions ahoy. We, we really, really needed this, don't we, people? But the third-person shooter does still have enough of a following that this is still a thing. And should be checked out whenever you have the time. Besides, who doesn't want a little bang-bang in their life? But this isn't just a time for MMO goodness of general. No, it's the month of the superhero as well. And who better to supply that for you than Champions Online? Yeah, they're still going as well. To think the little Canadian game that could is still hanging in there with updated things. I mean, from yesterday, uh, uh, September 29th, up until October 5th, they're going to have giant monster attacks. Oh yeah, giant monster attacks. Everything from a large spiky dinosaur to a large flaming monkey. No, no, not, not like that. I mean like a large gorilla that's on fire. Alright? We don't need any of that kind of fan art. Oh dear God, do we not need that kind of fan art yet. But there's also a large arctic, almost Lovecraftian god raining death and snow everywhere. Seems like quite the event. And if I was more than just a level four, I could enjoy that with other people, but you have to be 35 and up. Level, not age, obviously. But clearly, there's enough people doing that, so good on you champions online. I can't wait to enjoy more of you if I can ever set time aside to level up and get those microtransactions. Oh, oh boy. But, let's be honest, if ever there was a game going strong in the MMO community that supplied plenty of superhero action, it would have to be none other than the Marvel game that doesn't exist. No, we're actually talking about DC Universe Online, yes, which still has monthly updates of instances and adventures almost like it's a comic book who'd have effing thought right and of course they brought back the witching hour which is more of a community based mission where you either as a hero follow the directions of the phantom stranger or as a villain the directions of Talia al Ghul to protect the innocent souls of Gotham City from masked phantoms trying to ruin all things Halloween-y. Now, you're not going around saving kids and getting their candy, but there's still that vibe, that level of threat enough, which can bring players together when they're not PvPing the hell out of each other. And, by doing so, they brought back the Spooky Bites, in-game currency specifically meant for this event and the holiday. So of course it's done in the form of you know, Lewis Black's favorite candy. Candy corn. 
Oh, yes. Corn that tastes like candy. By doing so, you can get all kinds of interesting costumes and themes for your character if they do the supernatural or they're undead or something like that. It seems it would be more appropriate. But if you're one of those completionist types, go knock yourself out. However, maybe you don't want to put in hour after hour after hour collecting these things when you could just buy 50 of them off the top, you know? It's microtransactions again. However, compared to some companies pulling the stud, at least Daybreak is handling it a little bit better by being able to just stockpile points. Which, oddly enough, are nickel and diming. It's nowhere near as bad as some games, and something for 400 points might actually be close to an actual fiver. But for this, 400 points is barely 375, which isn't too bad. Let's be honest, a lot of you are used to this already, because you just have to get skins to make yourself look better rather than get good and play better. Huh. But that isn't the only thing that's been going on in the DC Universe Online. They weren't sitting on their hands until this month. In fact, they have been surprising the public with a lot of really good stuff as of late. The entire summer started off great with none other than instances and character set pieces and all kinds of promotional stuff for you guessed it, Suicide Squad, which turned out pretty good. Of course, I've seen one too many dead shots running around because why the hell not? People aren't creative. But, you know, I've seen a few Harleys and some gender flipping, so that's not too bad. I mean, you know, whoever thought Deadshot could have dad ass until everyone made Deadshot have dad ass. And this also slipped over into other IPs that DC has. Oh no, Harley Quinn wasn't the only one to get something pretty much focused on her. It was the Summer of Wonder, which technically is now wrapped up because, you know, we're in October. What was the Summer of Wonder? Well, it was to encapsulate everything Wonder Woman based. Which brings me to something that has gotten the world in a tizzy for some reason because a huge shocking revelations come out something that's literally stopped the presses almost broken the internet and set the world split the world in half on whether to give a shit about it or not it has been confirmed that Wonder Woman is indeed queer. Let that sink in. I'll give you a moment. Wonder Woman from Themyscira, the Paradise Island where nothing but women exist, has probably had a relationship with a woman more than just, we're friends, let me braid your hair. To which I and a lot of colleagues responded with, Oh my God, who the hell cares? Not in any negative way. It just was always kind of there if you have three brain cells or more. You just play it out. Um, you're surrounded by one entire group of individuals all your life. You're bound to pick up traits of theirs. You're bound to probably find some of them to be really cool to hang out with. Maybe more. Who knows? But if you remember the history of Wonder Woman, wouldn't that clearly dictate that, yeah, she was probably going to be a special little snowflake, unlike the rest of you cunts? 
She was created right before World War II, and even back then was almost deemed pornographic by the public. Running around in an outfit with bare shoulders and a skirt barely past her knee. My goodness! Not only that, but she had a thing about tying people up. This was back in the 1940s, people! This wasn't just a tactic to humiliate the Nazis. I mean, there were plenty of those already. Walt Disney made him look like a spindly, sickly little yipping chihuahua. And uh, all you have to do is bring up the name Mel Brooks, and any single time Hitler comes up, he's played as queer. And I mean flaming. Like, he makes Paul Lind look like Arnold Schwarzenegger by comparison. And yet, this whole revelation that Wonder Woman, oh my fucking god, Wonder Woman might have laid in bed with another woman. People, people, that's what you're getting worried about. We might go into a police state in the next few months, and you're worried about a fictional character who has been the forefront for the women's movement, free speech, you know, helping protect an entire race of people from dying. Yeah, um, she was one of the images that the Jewish resistance kept in their pockets to help them fight on. But this is your biggest issue with her. You people are the reason why I suffer from prehypertension. You got pissed off when she started wearing all white. You got pissed off when she put on pants as if that was supporting the patriarchy or something like that. You got pissed off when she went back to the skirt as if she was accepting the yoke of masculinity that, oh no, I should be a good little girl. There's no pleasing, you cunts. There is no pleasing, you cunts. Is there? I mean, when Wolverine passionately kissed Hercules, y'all didn't freak out about this. Then again, it was a side story, and oh, hey, he's from another different Earth, so it's completely okay. When yet, we have acknowledged that James Howlett, a.k.a. Logan, a.k.a. Weapon X, a.k.a. Wolverine, has lived a very long, questionable life. Even if you go back to certain stories where the character North Star showed up and talked about how he knew Wolverine. The first gay Marvel character said that he would trust Wolverine with his life, you better believe it, and such. You didn't think that might have been a phrasing of some sort? I mean, in the 80s, they pretty much confirmed Wonder Woman's whole thing. In the most cliche way possible, but still, it made a lot of sense. Picture right now, Justice League International. They're in the Tower of Maxwell Lord. It's a girl's night in. You got Wonder Woman, Fire, Ice, Vixen, and I think uh, two others. Sitting around a coffee table, drinking wine. They're all bringing up, you know, guy problem this, and marriage problem that, and I don't know if he's into me. The question of Steve Trevor, the one man Wonder Woman has ever loved, is brought up. And they bring it in Kanan that he should be in his 80s or so by then. For those of you who don't know, when Wonder Woman was introduced, yes, a man by the name of Steve Trevor was brought into the mix as well. A soldier fighting for the Americans. And, depending on the writer, it seemed like she just magically fed, fell head over heels in love with him. But if you go back and actually read the stories, 
She more admired his bravery at first, and commended him for being a good soldier. His dick never came into play. He was focused on the lives of his fellow soldiers, focused on the mission, and was willing to sacrifice himself above others to get the job done. That's what she was admiring, not his dashing good looks, his gorgeous blue eyes, or that cute frock of hair he had, or whatever the hell you say today. She admired him for being a soldier she could trust with her life. Then when she found that he is a decent human being, that just helped things. And yet, this has been a major thing going on. I, I mean, the shipping alone, which I'm surprised has gone into overdrive with you people, because images like this have already been around for a while. It just now it might be canon. How do you know it wasn't canon then? And when, woman, when Wonder Woman dropped the bomb in the 80s around that coffee table stating that, why do you think I lived on, on an island full of women called Paradise? You know, why did it take forever for her to leave? Gee, I don't know. Maybe because she was happy? She had no reason to leave. So, people, back to the matter is, you need to collectively get your heads out of your ass when it comes to what should really be important. I mean, when Dumbledore came out, y'all weren't lighting fires. When the reboot of Star Trek revealed that Sulu was gay, oddly enough, the one person that made any deal about it was Mr. George Takei, because he said he never played him queer. He played him like an officer. Was he upset with the choice? No, he was just stunned and surprised. You didn't even freak out when a pastiche of Batman and Superman known as Apollo and Midnighter were revealed to be queer because that was the intention. People joked for years that the bickering between Superman and Batman was like that of a married couple and that they should just kiss and get it over with. So, they finally did, technically. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not following you on this, people. I'm, I'm refusing to. It's not that you've dumbfounded me. I'm just not walking down that dark alley. Y'all want to be stabbed by the stupid knife? You go ahead and walk down that alley. I'm not. Been stabbed before. Didn't like it. Certainly not going to let it happen again. And yet, it's going to continue. It's going to continue. You're going to lose your shit over this again and again and again. Already, there's inflection within the game Overwatch that maybe there's some legit shipping that should be happening. You people were freaking out about Captain America and Bucky. That maybe the reason why Captain America has never had a successful relationship is because he's always had a thing for Bucky. Or maybe the fact is because he's lived too freaking long. Once again, the whole immortal problem. I mean, what's going to happen when they reveal that Vandal Savage probably, you know, buggered Julius Caesar at one point? Are you going to freak out about that? Hmm? What if there is a parallel world where the reason why Batman and Joker don't kill each other is because they share a bed? 
What's gonna happen when Deadpool has finally lost it and decide I'm just gonna steal a kiss from Spider-Man? Get it over with. I mean, it, it, is this ever going to end, people? Is it? Because I'm betting money it isn't. And you're only going to have yourself to blame. Because you're never going to be satisfied. You are never going to be satisfied with this. When they decide to do female Ghostbusters, you flipped your shit because Ghostbusters shouldn't be women. Why not? I mean, it was lackluster, but it wasn't bad because there were too many double X chromosomes on screen. You were the reason why the script got hurt. It's all your fault, people.